Good morning, Street Hunters. We're in Berlin today, and uh, with me is uh, John, my Hi. friend who's accompanied me from Greece, all the way from Rethymno, and we came to meet Martin. Hi there. Martin Walz is uh, an acclaimed street photographer. He lives here in Berlin, and he has the streetberlin.net Net website where you can uh, visit him for more of his work. So Berlin is an amazing city. Martin is going to show us around. And he's going to talk to us today about the GDPR and street photography. So you better stick around because it's going to be very interesting. Shall okay. we go? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So Martin, which uh, which way should we go? Straight. We cross over there. Yeah. Okay. We go from. Okay. Which area are we in now, Martin? We are in Kreuzberg, Saxon Dreisen. Actually, at 36. So there are there are Kreuzberg is a, is a large district. Uh, there is a nicer one, more gentrified one, and there's a more rough one, original one, and we are in the original one. Okay. Uh, but even then, it's quite gentrified by now. So this way. This way, yeah. So Martin, uh, what are the laws about uh, doing street photography in Germany? I mean, you know, I know there's an old law that exists since the early 1900s, am I right? Or is it the late, uh, late 1900, uh, well, late 1800s? I don't remember exactly, but there is a law. Yeah, they, they, are, they are basically law situation has evolved. Basically, it, it, you have uh, two, two laws which are basically uh, um, linked, linked to the Constitution. As one it is that you have the right of your own photograph, which means uh, if you're a normal person, another person is not allowed to share your photo online. To share it? But to share it. May take it, okay. but may not share it. Okay. Then there's a fairly recent law which came up in in, in the fight against against child pornography. Oh, okay. Uh, and that one says you cannot even make or possess images that are uh, uh, invading privacy, uh -huh. which is usually not a topic for street photographers, unless you shoot into into a home, into private places, yes. or into into an hospital. And they, you may not show people in a um, in a way that this is undignified. I understand. Which mm -hmm. is usually also something you wouldn't do. Yes. And it, it's quite difficult shooting children, so that get, would get you easily into trouble. Into trouble. I see. If you, if you stay away from that, you're you're usually back to the normal thing where you can photograph pretty much everything. But may not share it. Uh huh. But then recently there was a the, the Supreme Court of Germany has ruled on on the street photography case. And while they rejected the street photography, they said street photography is a renowned art form, and as such, it is protected by the Constitution, which means you have the right to do street photography, which means shooting candidly and which means also showing that work. So you have basically um, two laws or, or two rights that are conflicting. Uh -huh. and, and which means in the end, the court will have to decide which right is high up, the, the, which, which right ranks higher, your, your right to your own image or the right your of the photographer freedom of expression. to do yeah. street photography. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a very, very open question. I see. Thank you very much, Martin. I'm looking forward to talking about the GDPR later, but we'll save that for later. Let's do some shooting now. Okay. Now we are leaving both Kreuzberg and actually West Berlin. While we are going to the north, we are entering now East Berlin and the district of Friedrichshain, which is um, in many ways similar to, to, to Kreuzberg. It's very much a party district which has been heavily gentrified in the recent years. Cool. That's where the district where we're staying, right? Yeah. 
Going back to uh, street photography, this is an interesting way, uh, place to make photos with the light coming absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, 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 it's actually, one of one of my favorite spots here because uh, in the mornings you have, you have the light coming coming here for, from the east, and in the evening the light goes down here. So, uh -huh. so you have. Um, and you have um, the lamps up in the sky, which means at night you have a very spotted light here, so you can shoot here really mornings, evenings, nights. Nice. Like tourists, like Yadis. <laughs> yeah, like Yadis. <laughs> I always like when, when uh, there's a light situation like this. I like yeah. uh, shooting singles. You know, one person walking. Uh, yes. It, when they're in pairs, I don't know. It doesn't feel right. Do you get that feeling, Martin? Or do you? Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not fixed. I'm, I'm the, 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 the single person is always strong in form of uh, loneliness. One person, everyone can identify with the single person so I think single person shots are always strong and when you have pointed light and eye contrast that might even work better yes. yeah yeah when, when, when you shoot more than one person you always have to establish a story how you relate them to each other are they a couple are they just passing on uh, will they meet do they love each other do they hate each it other? makes it more or complicated yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. It more complicated and, and more specific mm. let's hang around here for a bit see yeah. if we can make a photo that's interesting i think i'm going to use that corner there Yes, this is a bit too close. I think I have to go further back. Yeah, this is better. So I'll just wait for someone to walk by. Yeah, I'm still recording. Is anyone coming that way? Okay. Turned her head. <laughs> There's someone coming. I haven't synchronized the steps well. Yani. They have no respect for Yes. Returista. Fia Voki. Okay, I think I've made the, enough shots here. Okay, you know what? I can't. I I made a one shot that's worth keeping. We can go. Well, you did much better than I did. <laughs> So uh, you're shooting with the Fuji X100F at the moment. Uh, yeah, F. Yeah, right. You uh, you uh, use different cameras, right? I use different cameras. I have the, this one. I have the Fuji XT2. I have the Fuji X70, which is basically the 28 millimeter version without a viewfinder. Uh, and I have a near vintage now Sony A7R. So, concerning, concerning cameras, do you think it affects uh, the uh, end result, what camera you use? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I mean from, 
technical point of view, all modern cameras are just good enough. Mm -hmm. From a usability point of view, I think there's a huge difference if you're able to adjust yourself very fast to a new situation, or if you can't because the camera is in the way of it, or if you're simply liking your camera and, and you love to shoot with it, or it's more like, ah, I hate this, I hate the menus, I hate the way mm -hmm. the buttons are arranged. So it's so, about user experience, really? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And how do you feel when someone sees one of your photos and, and says, oh, lovely photo, you must have a nice camera. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't mind actually. So so if you so want, my, my peace pad is actually not that one, but it, it is well seen. It's usually the good shots are not well seen. They are there is seen that there is an opportunity, and then you place yourself and move along and find an angle and find a point of view and find a closeness to the subject and find the moment, and then it happens, and then bam, it's a good shot. Mm -hmm. And it's not like oh yeah, that's cool. I will shoot that. I mean, this is what you can do with architecture, where, you, where nothing moves, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're shooting, if you're shooting in the streets, and the moment I think, oh, that's kind of nice, it's already gone. So, so, so great shots are actually perceived before they happen, and, and the vision of the image is there before the action has happened. I see. Yes, I agree with you. So, which way are we going now, Martin? So. We will do a little tour along the East Side Gallery. East Side Gallery is um, the only part of the wall that is still standing. And it has been redecorated directly after the wall came down with graffitis. And those graffitis are preserved and are some sort of a protected monument, which draws a lot of tourists and which is a nice place to shoot as well. Okay, cool. So we this along. way? Yeah. All right. So now we're walking across the wall, the famous wall of Berlin. Yeah, that's the East Side Gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's nice for, for street photography, it's fairly narrow. You have a lot of people. You have various backgrounds where you can play around and find something interesting. So you can do really cool sideies as well, eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> and as you're, as you're just a guy with a camera among many people with a camera, you're completely invisible as a street photographer. That's good. Because you don't have a sign on yourself. Oh, I'm a street photographer. I'm not a stupid <laughs> tourist as the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> so shall we walk uh, yeah, that yeah, way? Absolutely. Okay. We can do layers here as well. Layers is going to be interesting. That guy was perfect before, but he moved. By the way, let's walk on to tell something mm -hmm. uh, on, on street photography. So, so yes, please. So what's interesting here is. When you're shooting street, you want people to be separated. Each person separated. Exactly, yes. And you see here, people move, don't move that way. They clutter together. Yes, I uh, noticed and, that and already. That, that, that's a bit of a challenge here to, yeah. here to, to declutter persons. Also, they move in pairs all the time. Yeah. The perfect situation would be three levels three different individuals one really close to the wall on the other side someone coming in a little further and then someone sitting right in front of you and that would be a lovely triangular layered composition with an interesting background win but yeah. how could you get that <laughs> you have to wait for yeah, uh, for a long time yeah i think it, it, it's a lot about uh, patience yes uh, and i saw once a video of the um, Photographer Min Kiang, and he said that for a good shot, he easily waits for a half an hour. I said, Well, if Min Kiang can wait half an hour, I can at least wait for 10 minutes. So. Yes. Oh, 
bicycle. Bicycle wheel. Okay, this will work. I tried to do a um, something like this with the bicycle and the person, but uh, yeah. I uh, I needed to go further back, but there was the car, so I couldn't. So it was a failed attempt, which is usually the case in street photography, I yeah. think. Yeah. That's another thing I'd like us to talk about. Um, many people think that uh, street photography is, uh, you know, easy. And that uh, you just go out and you come back with 50 great shots and uh, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I wish. I wish that would happen. <laughs> Actually, street photography is simple in terms of gear because all you need is that kind of camera. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're shooting like fashion or if you're doing wildlife, you have all the You need gear. Speed. Yeah. Uh, 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 and of course, if you're shooting with a 500 millimeter, you need to know how to operate that. So, mm -hmm. so uh, in terms of uh, technicality, it's fairly simple. But but really, getting getting a good shot where everything aligns and everything is fine, that's a rare occurrence. Yes. I mean, it's quite often that I come home from 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 a walk in the street and I literally delete everything. Yes, I do the same thing. I do that with my photos, but I unfortunately I don't do it when I do these videos. I have to have the experience. So uh, yeah, you, you the photos you are, are all in. Hour. Yeah, you need to deliver. Yes, there you get to see. That's why I say these videos are all about the street photography experience. So people uh, can understand that it's very difficult to get a good shot in the course of a photo walk. Shall we move on? Yes. yes. I would like us to uh, touch upon uh, your two new books. You've uh, released, uh, you're about to release, uh, if I'm correct, uh, a book which you have co authored with uh, yes. somebody else about the GDPR and photography, right? Yeah, so there's one there's one book which will be really a book like in print and everything mm -hmm. by a publishing house and it will be co-authored by I think nine street photographers oh, nice. in Germany mm -hmm. and what we do basically is we show images and then we tell stories about the image, how we made it, why it's great or why it's not great and why it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what was important in that image, how did we process it and what not. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one this is one book that's coming out in end of August. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm in the process of um, I have written a new book which is yet to be published and um, this will be about a primer about street photography and that's where we cover the GDPR. Okay. So uh, our viewers must, most definitely are interested in uh, the GDPR and how it affects street photography. Since you are, since you have uh, written these books, I can't think of any other person who's more suitable to answer uh, the question: How does the GDPR affect street photography in Europe? I think I think it. Um First of all, I'm obviously not a lawyer, so, so this is a layman opinion. Um, and even the lawyers actually don't really know because um, GPR is new. This means uh, uh, you have no jurisdiction on it, no, no uh, 
so um, the courts haven't decided yet, mm -hmm. so, so people are uncertain. Uh, uh, there was a lot of talk about like uh, this is the end of street photography, marriage photography, uh, wedding photography, anything because uh, basically means uh, you have uh, to uh, consent to have your image taken and you can withdraw that consent at any time. Yes. Um, which would mean, uh, maybe seriously, you can't take any image at all because not only you need to consent, but consent is withdrawn at any time. So that's basically the end of photography. Yes, basically. exactly. And um, the, the Ministry of Interior made a, made a statement towards it, which I feel makes it a bit more bit more understandable and they say that the right to your own data is not an absolute right but it's a relative right and it's relative to other rights like the right to express your opinion between work as a journalist and the right to express yourself between work as an artist and doing street photography so it's uh, these two rights are conflict I mean let's let's make it more more uh, or easy. I cannot tell the IRS, for example, uh, I don't allow you to store any data on me uh, by that way, uh, stop uh, paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the IRS is still entitled to store my data, right? Yeah. Even though I haven't consented to it. So, so these rights are relative rights, and the right of anything with data is a relative right. I think the, the, the important thing to understand is what would this work for us? What is man actually? Think for example, uh, um, a large residential building. You have cameras all over the place. And, and now imagine you live there. If, if, you're, if your landlord records everything, stores everything, from a certain time on, he knows everything about you. when you come, when you leave, he will be able to identify your lover simply by yes. who's always coming and so on and so on and so on and mm -hmm. then you will know uh, 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 whatever and, and that we start to see digital photography and digital film as data and which can be processed as data i think that's a, that's a good thing and then we regulate that but i don't see any real effect on street photography to be honest um, what, what German authorities say, uh, I think that's so sudden. So I think there is a, this is much to do about nothing actually for photographers. Cool. So, so in other words, street photographers, don't worry. Just keep on doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, that would be would be my take on it. Yeah. I mean, there is uh, obviously not only in Germany but in many countries there are limitations on what you can shoot and you cannot shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, even in uh, Great Britain where you can shoot everybody in a public place, a lot of places aren't public and you can't shoot there at all. Or mm -hmm. Like malls, for example, yeah, 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 and uh, exactly. like exactly. At, uh, underground stations. There, if someone, exactly. a security guy tells you to exactly. stop, you have to stop. Yeah, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's uh, very enlightening, and I'm sure that our uh, viewers will find it very interesting. But what are your plans for the next year, Martin? Have you got something in the works? Well, uh, actually, yes, I think I'm, I'm doing a bit more serious, a bit more. Um, focused on, on architecture and less on pure street photography. This this first half year I've, I've worked a lot on I've worked on two books. I have a total of six exhibitions which took a lot of time to prepare and do like that. So mm -hmm. so for a second half of the year I will, will do some workshops, I will also do some workshops and I will uh, focus on my photography. Lovely, lovely. So uh, I know we mentioned it at the beginning of uh, today's video, but could you uh, remind us where we can see your work online? Yes, it's um, streetberlin.net is my website. Uh, on Instagram, I'm Street Berlin. Street Berlin. One word. Street Berlin. One okay. Word. Okay. So Martin, thank you very much for this Welcome. interview. Of course, we're going to continue shooting. This video isn't over yet. We just took a break to refresh ourselves. And, uh, well, yeah. prost! <laughs>
We are going now to Frankfurt Tour and then we're taking a subway to Alexanderplatz, which is the, the physical center of Berlin, actually. Alexanderplatz means there are 200,000 people moving every day, which means 5% of uh, the Berlin population is there every day. So if you took a pin and you uh, drew a circle around that pin, that pin would drop yeah. in Alexanderplatz over if, Berlin? If you ask anybody what would be possibly the city center, you would point at Alexanderplatz. Okay, cool. All big streets are converging and to Alexanderplatz. We're going there using the uh, S-Bahn? Subway, the subway. Okay, cool. So uh, let's go then. Hey, I'm also here. Yeah. I want to participate more in this video. Okay, man, so, sure. <laughs> I want to tell you two words about me. I'm using this Fujifilm X-T10 uh, 27mm lens and uh, I love auto program mode. I don't care what you think about that. It's very <laughs> convenient about me. If I want something more specific, I'm using aperture mode. And uh, also I have with me this Olymp Olympus new film camera. Ah, oh, nice. You like that? I'm a classical guy. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing that, John. Yanni? Yanni in, <laughs> Yanni, uh, in English is John. Yanis. Okay, Yanis. Okay. So, let me see. Yeah, I did. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah there was a lot of reflective stuff going on, yeah. I made a photo of her back only. You can only see her back and her head. You can't see anything else. And the girl on the other side of the street, which is well, something different anyway. We have arrived at Alexanderplatz. Did I say that right? Perfect. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, Make some photos here using a flash. We've uh, got our external flashes ready. We're going to spend uh, some time here and then we're going to call it a day. Let's see what we can do. Some portraiture work. I did. I didn't see the flash go off either because it didn't. Flash. It was turned off. I forgot to turn it on. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, that's, that's the fine art of undercover flash. Yes, the fine art of undercover flash. Yeah, that's funny. It went off now, didn't it? Yeah. Camera? The flash. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. I know that today we haven't made any significant images, but uh, it's been a lot of fun, and that's what the experience of street photography is all about. Just going out, making photos, enjoying yourself. And if you get some keepers, all the better. Oh, there's a light post coming out of her head. Oh, never mind. You know what I find extremely interesting? You've seen that, um, you've, you've noticed it as well, that when uh, you take a shot of a person, they're eyeballing you. You've seen that in the yeah. photo. Do you know that lasts a sp the splittest of seconds? And I've, uh, I've uh, learned that by looking at my videos and when I take the photos, uh, I see how long they look at me and the eye contact is a fraction of a second. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm just, you know, I wonder at how quickly we react as photographers and we capture that exact split second. Whereas if you um, if you see the video uh, finished and the photo superimposed on top, you can't understand that because you see the end result. 
So you don't get to see how long they were looking at you for. You only get to see that they're looking at you. So you might presume that they were looking at you for more than two, three, four seconds. But yeah. actually they are not. They're only looking at you for a fraction of a second. Yeah, true. Yeah. And if I wasn't doing these videos, I would never have uh, seen that. My synchronization sometimes sucks. Synchronization to flash holding and... No, no, no. I wanted to shoot uh, these two ladies uh, not overlapping each other, but yeah. of course I shot them overlapping each other. Yeah, <laughs> so we're at the end of another street hunt. I'd like to thank Martin for joining us. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a very enlightening street hunt this time. We talked about very interesting things. Uh, if you've uh, accidentally skipped to the end of the video, I highly recommend you see it from the beginning because we talk about the GDPR and street photography and also about what's allowed in street photography in Germany, which is another hot topic which I've noticed exists on the interwebs. And Martin has uh, very graciously shared his information about all this stuff and cleared the air. So it's uh, very enlightening. I recommend you give it a look. So, Martin, thank you very much again for My being pleasure. with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, your city is amazing. Berlin is beautiful. Uh, I'm definitely going to come again. I'd also like to thank my friend Yanis for coming all the way from Crete with me to join me in the street hunt experience. And that's it, really. So, uh, stay sharp and keep shooting. Stay yeah. sharp and keep shooting, guys. Bye-bye.